Hello there, I'm Black Pride, broadcasting at the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you just have to click the thumbs up, the thumbs down if you don't like what I talk about, or you can interact with my subscribers and leave comments in the description, well, in the comment section, or you can unsubscribe yourself. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about how the media is saying that the UK are not doing anything. They reckon that they're putting our lives at risk by not locking down the UK like Italy and parts of America and like how China did. But we have to remember how the UK operates. The UK operates with stealth. Have you seen the way they try to get fraudsters, terrorists? Um, what else is there? Um, fraudsters, terrorists? Well, any kind of criminal, really, tax dodgers, they do it with stealth. Nobody knows what they're doing. I remember when I used to watch this um, program about the um, the cheaters, you know, the people who try to rob the DWP, the job centre, and you have these forces claiming money, and they, um, they claim money, but and then they have two houses or they have cars and they're not hard up at all. Some of them have their own house and yet they're going to the job centre saying they don't have any money. And the job centre is giving them a hostel. They're living in the hostel and renting out the house. Those, those um, investigators, they don't go and jump on those people and say, oh, look, you are um, you're living in this hotel but you, we know that you've got a house down the road. Oh, no. They watch them for about six months to a year so that that person cannot say, oh, you know, I was just staying here or this and that. They haven't got an excuse. They make sure they monitor, film, take information and data for a period of six months to a year. And when they've got all the information they want, that is when they make their arrest. So it's a similar strategy with the coronavirus. They're not going to jump up like Trump and open up their big mouth and say, oh, we're going to have a lockdown. We're going to have a medical martial law. We're going to have everybody entrapped and we're going to put everybody in a detention centre and we're going to force everybody to have a vaccine. No, these are the kind of things they don't want us to know about. They don't want us to know about their plans. And a lot of times Trump puts his mouth in it and destroys the plans of the UK because anything the America does, UK are close behind. So now Trump has opened up his mouth on all their strategies because it's such a transparent country and Trump is always open and transparent in his own way that now the UK has to use a different strategy. They're now going to have to um, play like they're playing by the rules. They're going to have to do some kind of um, containment um, and risk assessment and so they're not they're still not going to shop they're still not going to stop um they i mean i think people are self isolating anyway so people are not going to pubs people are not going to restaurants i don't even think it's so much the government telling them not to go in a lot of cases it is but in a lot of cases it's individuals so afraid to go and go to the pubs go to the restaurants go to dances i mean all the dances have been cancelled so what happens if you've hired a hall? Do you get your money back? Is there a contingency plan? What happens if you want to get married? Suppose you plan to get married during this time. What happens then? Are you supposed to postpone it because of the coronavirus? What happens if there's a funeral? Funerals, they're just as well attended as weddings. You can't put off a funeral, can you? So what happens in that situation? So... What the UK government are saying, is saying that we are going to develop a, a herd immunity. Basically, they want us all to catch the coronavirus and see who is immune to it. 
on the one hand, they want to give us all um, the vaccine and see um, who kind of fights it off. And there's a whole heap of ism, schism going on there. So what they're saying is that they don't really want to isolate people because they really want everybody to catch it. And there'll be about 80 percent that will be able to fight off um, the virus and 20 percent that will not. And I don't know if those twenty percent fall into the elderly who they are or who they are quarantining for fourteen weeks. How can you quarantine the elderly for fourteen weeks? Does that mean they don't have visitors? Somebody said to me, You can't go and see them. How is that possible? You cannot do that to the elderly. You can't isolate them in that way. So there has to be some kind of contingency plan where people can go in and, and look after them if they are well. You know, if they've got the coronavirus, that's different, but they'll probably be in hospital if they have. But healthy 70 years, 70 years isn't even old. And they're talking about they've got to be quarantined for 14 weeks. So, um, yeah, so all I'm trying to say is that, you know, the media are trying to make it look like, oh, the UK isn't doing anything. But believe me, the UK is. They have their plans in place. They're saying the vaccine isn't ready. It's not going to be ready for a year or um, or a year and a half. I think this is just a rehearsal. This is just to see how what's happening, who's giving out what information and whether or not it's safe to kind of test the waters now or whether they should wait. I mean, in a year's time, if this kind of settles down, People are going to have a full sense of security. They're going to lapse back. And then they'll probably send out some other virus. And then people, by that time, the vaccine will be ready. And there will be mass um, vaccination, forced vaccination. And there probably will be the medical um, martial law. But the UK keep quiet. They ain't doing all of this. They never have done. Slow and steady wins the race. Not standing up there and blabbing off your mouth. The only thing we can thank Trump for and America for is that they're giving us a warning of what is to come for us. Like um, they reckon that they can delay the virus. So remember Sylvia Brown in her book End of Days she was talking about, oh, the virus will come quickly and it'll go as quickly as it came. And then 10 years later, it will rear its ugly head again. So what could be happening now is that this is all just to see how the world reacts, the global reaction, and to see how they're going to manage it and just test and feel out what people are like. Now they know. They know what people are like. Everybody's given away their emotions. They've gone and raided the bloody shops. You know, they've gone absolutely berserk. So the government knows what to do next time. And they'll be ready for all of our reactions. Because we have just been on a test run. Um, somebody sent me this today. Um, it says, beware of distractions. Do you know what the government is planning to roll out? Do you understand what the Global Vaccine Action Plan 2020 is? Do you know when the which vaccine mandates are being put forward in Parliament this year? Do you see how coronavirus is the catalyst for worldwide adult mandatory vaccination? I see many of us joking about toilet paper, posting about it on our socials, talking about it with friends. I also see many of us distracted from the real issue, which, trust me, is not running out of paper to wipe your butt. Around the world, governments will set up the masses to be distracted when they want to quickly pass corrupt legislations implement control orders and prepare for mass vaccination campaigns without us really having any idea. Don't be surprised if you get microchip if it will be in the needle already inserted when they give you it in the vaccination. You'll be already chipped and you won't even know it. It's called the New World Order. 
So maybe we should stop talking so much about toilet paper and start talking about what steps you're going to take for your family if your town goes on lockdown. Let's start talking about what the government plans to put in place which could see anyone being forcibly vaccinated in 2020. Let's start talking about how we will organise ourselves in educated groups to end these draconian laws. Toilet paper running out is a funny joke, but mass vaccination control orders and vaccine mandates are not. Are you aware? Are you prepared? We shouldn't live in fear, but we also shouldn't be so comfortably naive when it comes to the bigger agenda behind the coronavirus this year. Beware of distractions. Stay focused. Take action. Get organised and resist. We need all boots on ground in 2020 because honestly, between the coronavirus pandemic, 5G towers around us, fluoride in the water, glyphosate, being sprayed on our food, geoengineering in the sky, toilet paper right now is the least of our concerns. So I thought that was an interesting um, message I received today. So what have we got here now? Um, we've got we've got the um, UK, how they're handling it at the moment. They're talking about they're going to give us a mortgage holiday. Um, for those who've got mortgages, um, banks are supposed to give you three months reprieve, a three months freeze. And um, you just, I don't know if it's at the discretion of the bank or whether it is something that is mandatory. Um, they've got a 330 billion rescue package and apparently they're going to pay our airlines and salaries and goodness knows what else. Um, so these are the things that we know about that the UK is doing to make some of us not panic too much because they cannot have us going berserk just yet. They're not ready yet. Um, what else do I want to say? The UK government believes the virus is unstoppable and will probably become an annual seasonal infection. How convenient is that? Get us used to viruses. The plan, as explained by the chief science advisor, is to work towards herd immunity, which is to have the majority of the population contract the virus, develop antibodies and then become immune to it. But I don't think that is the definition of herd immunity. I read somewhere else is that they vaccinate everybody and with the coronavirus and then they develop immunity. Anyway, I don't know quite how that works. The theory is, of course, to advocate for mass vaccination so that if most of the population is vaccinated, a small percentage can go unvaccinated without new cases emerging. According to The Guardian, the vaccine is at least a year off working towards creating immunity within the UK population would ideally prevent widespread transmission and ideally prevent bad health outcomes, but most those most vulnerable, such as the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions. So we, we know um, why the UK is not banning mass gatherings. Um, at the moment, it's just... Um, but there again... That's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if it's the government or individuals who are now taking a stance and stopping things. Because I know where I work, stopping all supervision, stopping all trainings, um, meetings even. No meetings where there's, um, you know, lots of people. So all that stops. So maybe um, people are just not going to the restaurants. People are not just going to dances. Because can you imagine in a dance where you've got all these people and then, you know, it's so hot. And a lot of those dances, they it's not like they have the doors open or there's any windows. And then you're in close proximity, breathing down each other's necks, hugging up each other and goodness knows what in, in sweet embrace. <laughs> but that's what the dances are like. I mean, talk about intimacy with a stranger, honestly. Anyway, because the UK wants as many people in the UK to catch the virus, to develop herd immunity, 
They are not banning large gatherings or cancelling non-essential travel, but they have put a halt on mass events. Um, early social distancing measures such as banning large gatherings, restricting movements. This is what The Guardian says. Working from home and essentially shutting down society for time can reduce transmission and buy time for health services to ensure capacity is there for those needing medical support. But the UK know that this is the real deal. They know. That's why they're not panicking yet. The only thing is, is that some people get it who weren't supposed to get it. That's the problem. Um, what else is there? Oh, in Jamaica, they have um, they were kicking up a stink because apparently they've got this, they've got the market and it's been cleared so they can actually environmentally sanitise it. So they didn't give them an alternative place where they could trade, so they were kicking up a stink. And also in Jamaica, there is a mile, there is a queue to a, roughly about a mile to two miles long there's no there's no planes leaving jamaica so it's ironic that that guy that was on the plane going to jamaica he was the only one on it and yet these lines of people i have the video i wanted to show it to you but it's got a song in it the guy who's taking the video is playing music so i tried to do this video before and the warning came up copyright so i'm doing this video again actually so that I'm, I can't show you it, but it's miles long. So that is the um, strategy Jamaica is using. So people are using different strategies to deal with the situation. And I think um, Jamaica considers itself so small, they can't afford. One death is one death too many. So... Um, WHO claims the outbreaks can be contained or significantly delayed. I wonder if they can be delayed for up to 10 years. Hmm. As per Sylvia Brown's book, hmm. that would be interesting. I sometimes think, I wonder if the um, symptoms are psychological, though, because, you know, like when I cough and, you know, you get so paranoid, don't you? I mean, we've been coughing and snot sniffing and blowing our nose all our bloody lives. Did we ever think anything of it? And now all of a sudden, we're kind of thinking, oh, my God, have I, we got the coronavirus? Should we self-isolate? You know, it's really making people paranoid. Even me, when I cough or when I've got this kind of a little dry cough, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I wonder if I got the coronavirus. Where did I go? What did I touch? And there's me. You know me. I'm always touching my face. And then you go to work. You don't know about the desk. You don't know about the phone. It's just like, it's bloody mad, isn't it? Anyway, um, what else did I want to say? I think I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to drag it on too long. So I hope you found this useful. What was the purpose of this video? Oh, yes. Just to let you know that even though it looks as though the UK is not taking any action, believe me, they will be. And they are. That's all for now. Bye-bye.